All right, so this guy right here, man, he's been relentless. He's commented this on a ton of my videos. He really wants to see this Mihawk Vista analysis. And you guys that watch my TikTok as well, voted on the TikTok poll. You guys wanted to see this one next. So we're gonna do Mihawk versus Vista, Mihawk and Marine for the analysis of what he was doing to finally quell the noise on how he was portrayed. So now this is very simple. Obviously, like you can tell, Mihawk is really only just curious about what's gonna happen. This is a common theme that you're gonna see. You see this with Whitebeard. When he sees Whitebeard on the ship, he says, now this seems like conjecture, but the distance between us doesn't seem very far. Meaning it looks like Whitebeard would be an easy target to hit even from that range, right? So that's why he takes the sword out. He just wants to see what's gonna happen if he sends out a slash. And of course, that's where you see Jozu jump in and block the slash. Now this in no way means he cannot cut Jozu. When you know about the Breath of All Things, you understand that with the Breath of All Things, you have to decide what you want to cut you see a perfect example of this with mihawk beforehand as daz bones blocks one of his slashes at one point and then he decides all right i'm gonna cut steel and he cuts right through daz bones like nothing happened so if he just decided to cut diamond shouldn't be an issue but he didn't decide there he was simply testing to see the distance between whitebeard and them so that's one thing just taken out you then have his curiosity with luffy even when Luffy first arrived, he said, you never go without making a spectacle worth seeing or something to that effect, right? Now, the curiosity with Luffy stems from Barati, where he was impressed with both Zoro and Luffy's ambitions for the future and was looking forward to seeing them again. He was so interested in this, he actually went to Shanks, sought Shanks out on an undisclosed island and had a conversation with him about this. So he wants to see what's up with this kid and, and what the bounds are to his luck the fortune that would favor him right so he does say as he walks up to luffy my apologies red hair but i will not be merciful with my power now fate let us see how you favor the shining star of the next generation will his life end here or will you save it from my black blade anybody with any common sense understands that that doesn't mean mihawk's trying everything possible to beat luffy or to kill luffy he's simply just in a situation where he's not gonna restrain himself to like not killing him like, if the strikes land on him, they'll kill him, is essentially what he's saying. Doesn't mean that he's trying to blitz him down or anything like that. So you understand that, yeah, he's swinging his sword. But the main thing is just, like, he kind of wants to test, is he going to make it out of this? That's the whole point of what he says, right? So Luffy runs over to him. He says, this is no time for me to be fighting a guy that strong. He starts running. And Mihawk kind of just picks up his sword. He scans through the battlefield, right? Through all these people fighting. Pinpoints Luffy and says, you're still in my range completely ignores everybody else and only cuts Luffy. It's like a perfect cut. He closes his eyes. He's like, you remain within my range. Luffy gets cut. Miok then jumps to where Luffy's position is. He might have nicked his leg here or Luffy just jumped out of the way, but Luffy jumps out of the way regardless. Then these two dudes show up. They're like, out of the way. We'll stop him for you. Miok just immediately takes him out. Luffy then thinks about attacking Mihawk. He's about to use Gumu Gumu no Jet. And then he sees the future in which his arm gets chopped off. So then he pulls back the attack and doesn't go through with it. He understands he's going to die there. I find this panel super interesting because Miok specifically says, you seem unusually calm, speaking to the fact that this might have been a hint at Luffy using Future Sight inadvertently, which makes perfect sense. It should be something that's possible to do. Just like people that use Conqueror's Hockey unconsciously without knowing. Just like Ace in the Ace novel used Armin Hockey without knowing what he was doing. So it's very possible, especially in a high pressure situation, that that happens. Happen. He then starts slicing at Luffy and here again you see Mihawk's true intentionality. He says, now what will you do? You're moving farther and farther from your brother. Like he's taunting him. Because the situation is he knows Luffy's trying to get past all these people to get to Ace. So Mihawk's slicing at him and Luffy's retreating at this point. So it's like, hey, you're gonna have to get past me at some point. I'm not gonna just get out of the way here. But you see him stop, look at him, all this other things, and he kind of just keeps a slow pursuit. He wants to see how Luffy will respond in the face of such insurmountable odds. How will the tides of fate save luffy from him but it doesn't mean that he's trying to take luffy out as soon as possible or that he's being malicious he simply is curious this is something to quell his curiosity obviously he knows he can kill luffy we know from his previous interactions the truth is he doesn't really want luffy to die like he says you're too early for you to die to zoro same kind of logic for luffy he could have killed all these people then at that point but he spared them at that moment because he was curious about the levels they could reach and he already taken notice of luffy's dream to become the pirate king he wants to see hey i'm gonna give you the opportunity i'm not gonna take you out but if you get hit by my slashes in the right way you're gonna die 
like the one that cuts right through the ice block. That would have killed Luffy if it hit him. How are you going to get out of this? Show me. Show me. Why did Shanks bet on the new gen with you? Why did he give up his arm for you? Show me. That's what the truth is. He gets prepared to attack Luffy once more, and then this is where Vista shows up. And Marco says, Vista, lend him a hand. Right? And now, there's been some funny-ass comments on my page where it's like, imagine somebody saying this to Roger, like, go handle Roger. Vista, go handle Kaido. Vista, go do this. And I do see the sentiment behind it where it's like, yeah, you would never have a situation where, like, they'd send Vista to block on one of these guys. Or Marco's like, go take care of this guy, right? It doesn't make much sense. But one must understand how truly lax and bored Mihawk really is. To where somebody that's a swordsman with some renown will garner some kind of interest from him. It'll pique his interest enough to like be entertained for a minute. Keep in mind, this is the same guy that was hunting Don Krieg, chasing them around and tormenting his crew just for pure enjoyment, just to have fun. And then even when his intention was to take Don Krieg's head finally at that moment, he got sidetracked by a swordsman with a little bit of renown, right? You gotta understand these facts. And even in that fight, he lets Zoro pull out his onigiri technique and see what he has. He blocks it with his little butter knife and then stabs him once. And then it's like, all right, doesn't kill him with that. It's like, all right, because he was impressed, said, yeah, I'll finish you off with Yoru. He's a completely different character from these guys mentioned. Also, you have to acknowledge you do see lesser tier characters holding off people. You see minor straw hats getting moments against characters like Big Mom or fucking Gorosei members or whatever who are, you know, fodder in their own right. They're fucking garbage. And then the scabbards with Kaido and all these other people. So these things do happen. But yeah, I do see that it is weird that he says something like that. But you got to understand that in this moment, the attack that he intercepts is again, something meant for Luffy again. So it's nothing that's supposed to be like this wide ranging attack this fucking world beating attack that's what vista intercepts but miyak wasn't even paying attention to him you then have gaz bones block an attack in a similar fashion you have crocodile block an attack in a similar fashion what vista did initially all these attacks meant for luffy they can be blocked by fucking all these random people like i told you earlier though when he wanted to cut Des Bones, he cut him immediately and sent him down. Mihawk then is surprised. He was focused on Luffy. He says, Fifth Division Commander Flower Sword Vista. Vista says, A pleasure, Mihawk. So you've heard of me. I would be a fool had I not, says Mihawk, as the two just keep facing each other from the slash that Mihawk had already sent out. At that moment, you still see that even in this moment, he doesn't even give a fuck about Vista. He's watching Luffy run away, and Mihawk thinks to himself and takes admiration in the fact that this is no skill or technique, but the simple ability to turn those around him into allies, right? So he's taking note of Luffy, watching Luffy, and that's what he was concerned with. He wanted to see this. He was curious if Luffy was going to survive him. And here's another instance. Wow, somebody jumped in to help him, right? He was able to turn the tide, turn somebody to his side that gave him an opening to escape. Now, it's also very important to note at this point, there's a military strategy going on. So these fights are taking place on the ice that Aokiji created in the bay. At this point, you see that sent tomorrow and there was a whole plan with the pacifistas they were going to start unloading fire on the bay right this was sengoku's plan so essentially like the bay is going to be destroyed they have to leave this position that is why you see miyok say let's postpone this match because the bay is literally about to be destroyed you see that gecko moria and this other commander were also fighting and they both stop fighting as well right and they both end up moria ends up right back next to mihawk they basically retreat to their sides for the war because the bay is about to be destroyed this was the whole plot that's the only reason there's only one actual clash that takes place besides the one where he's intercepting the luffy attack and this is just like mihawk swinging his sword one time and then vista like clashes with it one casual sword clash they meet in the middle once and then mihawk notices what the hell is going to happen the pacifist says unload on the people people are retreating all over the place and then of course just like i said mihawk ends up back in his position just watching things take place and then later people are going to say like oh he didn't want to fight shanks we already knew he didn't want to fight shanks from the beginning of the series or he said he doesn't want to fight a one arm has been. Also, it seems that they have a friendly relationship anyway. So I don't think like he wants to even fight his friend who he respects anyway for no purpose when he only came here because he was curious about specific things. So that's really the simple answer. The reason I didn't make this video for a long time is because it's truly common sense. Like we all know Mihawk's the strongest swordsman. Nobody with any shred of integrity really believes that he's trying at all at Marine Ford. Anything you see Zoro do, is just gonna upscale Mihawk. Anything you see any swordsman do is really just gonna upscale Mihawk. It just is what it is. So I hope this clears it up. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.